Ardra Shepard, and this is Tripping On Air, a place to talk shit about what it's like to have MS. Normally, I like to make everything about me, but MS also affects the people we love. So weighing in from the partner perspective is Alex Hajar, my friend whose wife also has MS. Join us monthly as we dish about everything from symptoms to stigma. If you have MS or you love someone who does, we want to connect with you. Party season is upon us, and for those of us living with MS, fatigue, mobility issues, even managing sensory overload can sometimes make the festive season feel like more trouble than it's worth. If you're tempted to just stay home and sit things out, this episode is for you. We've got 12 tips and tricks to make sure your social life isn't a casualty of MS. Plus, you're going to want to share this episode with the party people in your life because we've got specific tips for what your friends and family can do to make sure you can all enjoy the holidays together. Alex, you're in a band. I assume you like to party. What's your holiday season vibe? I think that's funny. I'm I'm also 37 now. So while I like to make a room shake, you know, from the safety of a stage, I also enjoy a nice hot water bottle and a book and a, a gin and tonic. But for parties, I really uh, enjoy a nice warm apartment full of my pals with, uh, with a cool balcony lined with fairy lights and uh, absolutely no snow. I feel like you're talking about my apartment. <laughs> yeah, I am a little bit. It's very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cozy. We do have a very light lit um, balcony. And yeah, I like to have a party. I'm a party person too, but it can be tough with, I mean, we don't control the snow or the weather unless mm. we move somewhere without snow, but we're in Canada. So hard to avoid. We have to, we have to roll the dice on that. Okay. I'm going to start with the first tip, which is not going to be something that most people think of right away. And this tip is for friends and family of people with MS who, like me, might have some accessibility needs. I use a rollator or a cane to walk. Stairs are difficult. Bathrooms in the city, Toronto, are a nightmare. Not every venue is accessible. It is a special kind of gift if you are organizing an event and you pick the venue and do the accessibility homework for the person who needs who needs access, if that makes sense. I feel like a lot of us are tasked with having to pick the venue and it's kind of a drag to always be the one who has to has to figure that out. Yeah, completely. I think there are some venues that are really great. Uh, I mean, speaking about going out on a night out, like to a concert, if you want to go see a friend's concert, um, there are some venues like the Cameron House actually does have a ramp from the front room to the back room. So that's super helpful. Um, there's still a step up to get into the building for like no reason. But I mean, once you're in, it's OK. Um, and there's a uh, there's a place on Dundas called the Baby G, which I saw someone in a full uh, f like a really super cool motorized uh, wheelchair there last week and they were having the time of their life. That's amazing. I anytime I'm at a venue that has just one step to get in, I always make a point of telling them about Stopgap. Stopgap.ca. That's an organization that makes these custom ramps that can make an inaccessible otherwise inaccessible venue like so easily accessible here in toronto you, you i mean you see those colorful ramps all over the place anyway all that to say it's really nice to not have to be the one who's always saying uh or who's all like it it is kind of it's a chore right to do the homework and and find those things out. I just, it's like a nice treat for me if someone does that for me. Because it's also, it's kind of a burden to pick the place. You want everybody to be happy, right? Well, yeah. And you know, I feel like it's not your fault, quote unquote, maybe, but it also feels like sometimes I guess you get that guilt of having to say no when you know that venue is not the right venue yeah. um, to, to, to get into or whatever. I also think like some of the staff at restaurants should maybe be trained a little bit better we went out the other night uh for dinner and the first thing someone said was when we walked in you know nicole uses a mobility aid and uh the first thing was like are you okay with the high top table i'm like 
does it look like we would be though? Look, I, I don't know. I feel like you, it'd be obvious to seat us at like a regular seated table and there's, it was empty. So I feel like training is better. And maybe it could also just be like, what table do you prefer? You know? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Tip number two. This tip is for trippers and it is pre-rest. I used to get ready at the last minute. I think it's kind of normal. You know, if you have to be out the door to sort of shower, put on your makeup, get ready and leave, I never do that anymore. I I always give myself an hour between when I'm like dressed and ready and when I have to get out the door, if it's going to be like a big night. And I think my tip for the people who live with people who need that time is to protect that time. Don't ask them to do anything during that hour. If you have kids or, or your partner or whatever, just like treat that time as sacred. I think it's, it helps for me to do that. I think, uh, so my question as a partner would be, um, if, if your person is, um, let me put it this way. I'm the kind of person who's like, are you ready? Are you ready? But my question is, uh, what is a good question to maybe motivate your person to uh, go ahead and do that thing if they're not doing it now to get ready so that they do have time to rest before you exit the door? I'm like, How do you tell Nicole, like, get ready and then up. rest for an hour? Yeah, not hurry up. But yeah, like you said, get ready before you have to go. But like, so you can protect that that hour of time. Yeah. Well, why don't you maybe say, you know take this get ready and then take an hour to rest i won't like i don't you know like take that hour just say it outright like, you just say it yeah and then right. don't ask okay. her to do anything and i mean also maybe don't ask her like are you ready she'll probably just tell you when she's ready are you usually the one that's like ready and tapping your watch or is it nicole N no it's me i'm the one it's you. i'm super impatient yeah. to be honest yeah you gotta respect the ms time zone yo i know and that's why i'm asking you know you have to communicate which i think we're going to talk about later anyways but the communication is key and i don't want to put any you know pressure on the situation because uh that's not helpful i just find getting ready can be so exhausting that when I do wait till the last minute, by the time I get in the Uber, I kind of want to cry because I'm just spent. But MS is really that energy comes in in waves and rest really does buy us extra time. I just feel like everyone's going to have a better night and a better time if I can pre-rest. It's like pre-drinking, but without the drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good advice. All right. The next tip, be flexible. And this is basically for everyone. I mean, that's the thing about MS. I can't predict when I'm suddenly going to be feeling terrible and need to bail. And holidays are not. Who doesn't love found time? I feel like if somebody, I feel like if somebody bails on me at the last minute, I'm always a little bit glad. Just you know, we're all so overscheduled and over crammed in with itineraries. It's kind of nice just to have fine found time. Yes. No. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like finding uh, five bucks in your pocket, right? That's free time. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, I just think that, yeah, it's, it, and maybe this leads into the next point, but sometimes I feel not um, good about going out um, you know, like if, if, if Nicole is like, I really don't feel like going out now, like last minute. And I'm like, oh, but we had all these plans and it'll be fun and this and that. But yeah, I feel like, do you have to ask for permission? I think this is something that you have to negotiate with your partner. So my tip about being flexible in terms of the person that's getting bailed on would be be chill about it don't make the person who's canceling feel any crappier than they already feel my tip for the person who's bailing the person theoretically with ms would be give the person you're bailing on permission to go ahead and do whatever that thing is without you yeah so it's more guilt-free so to speak yeah, so that which leads right into tip number four, which is to let go of the guilt. I feel like if a party is lit, then it's not going to matter. It's not going to make it or break it if I'm there or not. And it can definitely 
feel that way. Like MS isn't my fault, but I still sometimes feel guilty or irresponsible how it can F up everyone's plans. I am going through that today um, with a, a dinner plan that has that had to be canceled. I'm sure my friends and family don't want me to feel guilty, but I don't want my friends and family to feel guilty also about doing stuff without me. So I don't know. It's a wasted emotion, right? It is. It's a bit of wasted time. And I think like it is about the, I don't know, the permission is like an interesting word there because it's a good thing, but it's, it feels like there's a, almost a restriction due to the permission itself. So it's a bit of a quandary, but yeah, I think if you are the person who's going out, maybe you feel guilty for leaving your person at home and, and not being with them while they don't feel so hot. Um, and, and I've, you know, I've heard, um, from Nicole and from uh, friends of ours and stuff like that, like, you know, they feel guilty because they can't go out or they feel guilty because uh, they're keeping you, quote unquote, they're keeping you at home. Um, but I think letting go of that guilt is really the key in that situation. Go out, have a good time. One person goes out, has a great time. The other person stays at home and binges a Netflix show and, and just uh, spends that time with themselves and their cats or whatever. I think it's got to be 50-50 if, mm. you're, if you're talking about partners, right? Like, go out and have a great time without me, but also, you know, stay home and be cozy with me 50% of the time also. And maybe don't tell me you had the time in your life while I was <laughs> Netflixing yeah. and chilling on my own, you know? <laughs> That's totally fair. I think, yeah, it's definitely uh, a dynamic uh, that both partners have to balance uh, and part of that is communication but the guilt part is sort of the ugly part you can I think leave at the door um, but you know spending time with each other is, is 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 important as well so I'm willing myself I'm I'm willing to dip on a few um, you know things that uh, you know parties or whatever that where I can just sit home and also watch Netflix because maybe I didn't want to actually go in the first place too sometimes that's a thing there's always that like I like your wife having MS is always your get out of jail card free if you are staying home with like massive FOMO and feeling like a sucky baby I don't want you to hang out with me anyway just go you know yeah yeah that's not that's also not a good uh vibe to have in it's the not house. a good vibe yeah no tip number five lower your expectations I think this is, I mean, maybe it's like, that sounds like a downer, but it's maybe more about having realistic expectations, you right. know? So if I really have to rally, if I'm really tired, then if the expectation that I can realistically commit to is we'll go to this party for 15 minutes, usually the energy somehow shows up, but there is this kind of security blanket safety feeling in having an escape plan, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it, this is kind of a funny thing because I feel like in my, uh, let's say, cultural experience, uh, this probably happens with everybody, but when you leave somebody's house, there's always been like this, you know, you're saying goodbye, but you say goodbye for like 20 minutes. So I feel like maybe that's the mentality. You can go in the door and like immediately start saying goodbye, and then it'll take that 15 minutes. And if you're not done, you can stick around for coffee. That's I love that. And can you please pass that along to <laughs> my husband who is famous for starting a new conversation after you've said goodbye like six times like he'll bring something else up and I'm just like I just start walking to the car like I assume he'll catch up is he Italian I feel like that's because that's something that my my grandparents have always been classic for they just stay at the door it's also freezing like one person's at the door freezing the other person's well inside and they're the ones continuing this conversation this is where the irish get it right irish exit right no goodbye i'll text you from the car <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's very smart actually somebody commented on my instagram recently because i was posting about my trip to milan and they described their travel style as slow travel and i really i've been thinking about this concept a lot in terms of how we set our expectations i'm going to new york city next week and um i think it is important to set those expectations so that you're not as disappointed and the things you get to do that are extra feel more like 
bonus instead of pressure. Right. Okay. I like that yeah. though. So slow travel, slow partying, like you don't have to do it all to have a good time. Yeah. Right? Everything's a cherry on top when you have lower expectations, I feel. Tip number six touches a little bit on what we were talking about before of like, bailing and ch plans changing and that is to have a cozy plan b kind of consolation prize and i this can work with your partner or uh by yourself or with your friends or whatever but we're talking about the holidays the holiday season in particular here so you know i don't know what your cozy plan b is but i feel like a holiday movie some music pajamas like really good snacks something low key that's like you can still feel festive you can still feel like the holidays but you don't have to brush your hair or put on a bra yeah i think uh anything like cozy or i think what's the danish word huga if you get that vibe right um that would be any but any, any that would be my perfect plan b like i said a water bottle hot water bottle and uh and a nice book uh that's that's what we do best maybe tea or a, a hot tamale i don't know many like alcoholic uh drinks a like hot that. toddy i feel oh, like a, a hot tamale that's like a hot pepper right? that's what that's i thought not. yeah so it's a hot toddy it's a right? different party i got it wrong Put on some nice slow music. If you're uh, like my mother-in-law, you have 400 Hallmark uh, Christmas movies loaded up on your PVR, and that's that's your plan B for every day. Yeah, that, that almost feels like a plan A. Right. Yeah. Well, when there's that many, I could I could agree with you. Yeah. Do you have a favorite holiday movie, Alex? So uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but uh, Love Actually is our number one. Is my number one favorite movie actually but it happens to also be a christmas movie i'm an elf girl i like elf oh that is it's a good movie. so good yeah. and muppets the muppets christmas actually we, we try to watch that every year i don't so. think i've seen that one so maybe i'll put that on the list oh, for really? this year yeah you're missing out it's hilarious and yeah. christmas snack is there what's your favorite christmas snack or holiday snack i actually really like some festive bark really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm kind of a, a bark guy, but like a white chocolate with almonds and uh, uh, those really annoying uh, candy cane pieces crushed in the middle. I think that's a great snack for the holidays. That is like my really. Well, I don't I don't make it with almonds. I make it with white chocolate and dark chocolate and crushed candy canes. Nice. What about your? Is that your favorite snack? I love my mom's fruit cake. And unfortunately, oh, oh. I know everyone's so down on fruitcake, but it's like, yeah, no. but it's full of alcohol. Yeah. Though. My mom puts enough rum in it that it's, you can definitely, you don't want to give it to kids. Nicole makes it, but we don't use, <laughs> does your mom use candied fruit? We use like real fruit. No, no. She uses like <laughs> candied fruit. Like this thing would okay. survive a nuclear, right. like, yeah, <laughs> okay. it's like doesn't perish. All right, we'll have to try that recipe. Maybe. No, I'm not sharing that. You, okay, you could make it, but it'll cost we'll you like a make... hundred bucks in supplies. It's like it's, it's like it's a ninety lot. bucks of rum and ten dollars of. It's actual very, ingredients. it's very, very special, and okay. it's the only. Th it's like the only time of year you can eat it. I'm gonna have anyway. to. Where are they now? I'm gonna have to fly out and get a piece. Nova Scotia. Yeah, we're flying oh, down. Damn. So yeah, nice. that's. I gotta make room in my carry. Bring some back. I would like to. All right, tip number seven. This one's super important. Unfortunately, I feel like it's also controversial. Avoid the mistletoe. If you ask me, there is too much kissing at Christmas. Yep, I guess. I don't know. It's just funny. I see mistletoe, but <laughs> I've never gotten a lot of love under them. But I guess you could say that. <laughs> it just would be like a creeper <laughs> kind of vibe. Yeah. Just actually hang out there. What I'm really trying to say <laughs> is if you're sick... Stay home or at least tell me you are sick. This is your annual reminder that infections can cause pseudo relapses and that up to a third of actual MS relapses are precipitated by colds, flus and infections. It's really, it's really important. Yeah, I think I'm going to maybe say the controversial part, um, but no offense to anybody, but if your kid or kids are sick, uh, you may want to stay home and warm the bench uh, and use that plan B until they're better. Um, like a healthy parent doesn't always equal healthy children. 
uh, and, and watching Charming, but sniffly toddlers touch everything in the house at a party is worrying at best and terrifying at worst for all the reasons that you described. Um, kids are like super vectors. Um, and, and, you know, don't be mad if I, if I end up leaving after seeing your kid's runny nose and not wanting to uh, deal with three weeks of a bedridden spouse because, you know, it's just something they picked up at school. Like, it, it's just, it can be detrimental. And I think that's... It's really, really hard. And that's the part where, you know, if you're, if you're not going to bail, just give me a heads up because I don't want to put myself in that situation. A warning, I think a warning is better than getting literally getting sick or 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 like just being afraid of a child or a person who has the sniffles yeah that is it's a terrifying anxiety mm. for me to overcome yeah for sure tip number eight this one i like it's called cut corners i like to un entertain but i feel like you know in order to do that it might mean shoving shit in a closet or under the bed like outsource as much as you can whatever you can afford to do whether that's cleaning catering if you need to pay your nephew to fill out your your holiday cards like that's a smart idea you don't have to yeah. right <laughs> sorry i'm just thinking of how cheap i can get this labor for my christmas cards for my nephew to do it's a real shame to avoid getting together with people or having people over because there are dishes in the sink or dust bunnies under the couch like i feel like my gift to you is that my apartment is like never that clean so that you can feel better about your own mess or smugly superior in in your case, Alex, because I feel like you're kind of a neat freak. So I am a bit of a neat freak, but I don't think I can hold the moral high ground anymore. We hired a cleaner, uh, which is actually I think it's a, a bit of an achievement because it's something I'm quite grateful that we can do because not everybody can. Uh, but she came yesterday, and I feel like our place is actually bigger. Uh, and and she like she found so much dust. Like I had no idea. I thought it was like pretty tidy, but she found an embarrassing amount of dust. Um, and it was great. So if you can hire even just a cleaner, just to clean your place before your friends show up, if that's what you need, um, or again hire your nephew or whatever uh, or niece, just do it because it's. It's such a relief, um, even for, for me as a partner, not having to disorganizedly shove things under the carpet or couch to keep things neat. It's just a, it's an absolute weight off your shoulders. It's really great. I'm so glad to hear that you did this, Alex. That's really, it's great. You know, I think, you know, when we talk about division of labor in a marriage and in modern families, you've got both partners usually working like it is so much to run a household i kind of can't believe that we have to like prepare three meals a day it's like oh my god we have to eat again it's so much work you know <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. weird it's a, it's a lot and so you know you don't even have to commit to having a cleaner once a week like once a season even you know if that's if that's what's in your budget just to do like a really deep clean i think can be something that can really help and can and at the holidays can help you spend your energy and resources in in better ways you know i think not a lot of us need more stuff more presents we need time together and experiences and if that can help you facilitate that i think it's awesome yeah less dust and cleaner windows that is a real gift i'll be honest like and and that's that is a good gift i think we've actually discussed this totally it it is a it is a primo gift as i think for anyone who's doing any cleaning uh, a gift of of having someone come in and, and do that for you is um like i said a weight off your shoulders yeah the holiday gift guide is coming up but the things that are perennially on that list if you are looking for something to buy for your loved one who has MS or chronic illness, cleaning and blow dries. That's it. That's all I ever need. Blow dries like your hair? Yes. Like salon. Oh. Yeah. Blow dries. Oh, yeah. Trust. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I have not known that pleasure in uh, many years. So thank you for reminding me of that, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tip number nine, we are blowing through these. Tip number nine is communicate at a neutral time. And what I mean by that is, you know, negotiating party season and the holidays 
it is going to mean some compromise and some planning ahead. And it's always a good idea to communicate what you need and expect from the people who support you, who are in your life at a neutral time. And the same goes for the people who don't have MS, who, um, you know, you can communicate your expectations or concerns or what, however you want to plan at a neutral time. It's never a good idea to be on the cusp of an event or on, on your way out the door when having these conversations. How do you and Nicole communicate what she needs or what, what you need? Like what strategies do you guys have? So for a while we were employing this strategy uh, of not talking to each other in the mornings. Uh, so it would be, we'd literally try to maintain as much silence. We're both, uh, I'm definitely not a morning person. I'm more of a, what you would call a bear in the morning. Uh, it's not like anytime you ask me anything first thing in the morning, it's going to be a no, uh, or it's going to incur some sort of uh, uh, unpleasant aggression. Um, because I just don't like, you know, people are not mourning. People who are not mourning people get what I'm saying. So I, I'm fully on board for this. When Carrie asks me every morning how I slept, I just, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to not be hostile. And also, you're assuming that I slept. Yeah, right? Yeah, there you go. Which actually, ironically, last night I slept for like nine. We both slept for like nine hours, which we haven't done. I haven't done since I was in my early 20s. Um, so that was a weirdly ironic thing that happened. But yeah, so this actually, uh, I'll say it's a technique, but it's not really a technique, I guess. It's just something I learned. It's from uh, it's from Arabic culture. So it's called, the morning is called El Sobay. Uh, in the more that's what the morning is and so it's more of like a way of life where you wake up you have your coffee or tea or whatever in your breakfast but just maintain complete it's almost a form of meditation uh where you just com maintain complete silence and i i literally cannot make decisions before like 10 o'clock in the morning and so that really fits our vibe and I think that's how we do it. I like that. Yeah. That's like keep your hateful thoughts to yourself before 10. There's a lot of, yeah, internal brain chemistry that's completely negative. And it, for me, it just happens all in the morning. So don't ask me because I'm trying to sort that out before I have to actually discuss things with people. <laughs> I like that a lot. So it's like 10 o'clock. You have, it's like a morning routine, right? You just precisely do your thing. Okay. That's cool. In terms of, when you actually communicate though, I like for me, I feel like I have a list of things that I need help with. And it's so a lot of it kind of falls on the weekend when there's that free time. And so for me, I feel like putting it in writing, maybe in an email is a way for things to not get forgotten. The list can be long. It's also a way for me to not feel like I'm just constantly asking for things and nagging about things so that's that's a system that works for us just kind of make a list oh lists are critical yeah yeah i love that we have yeah. i mean we have pre-made pads for our grocery list and so that it just takes away the whole thing of trying to think of what to buy you just automatically mark it down so yeah and i mean i can't see how that wouldn't work for daily chores and stuff so that's a good idea tip number 10 Drink water, stick to your diet, exercise, and sleep routines. Don't let yourself get dehydrated because you're not sure where the bathroom is going to be when you're going out. This is like so common for people with MS and it just makes existing symptoms worse. We all know how delicate the ecosystem is. There's like so much temptation around the holidays to drink more booze, to eat different foods, to stay up late and I think it's just uh, as much as you can stick to your habits one glass of water for every glass of wine eat before you go if you're worried about filling up on junk and other stuff I don't know what do you think about that Alex yeah no I think that's a good policy regardless I mean I went out for a walk yesterday with a buddy and we went for a couple uh pints after and I didn't drink any water in between and uh it was it was a uh, my head was swimming a bit and I and now I but I do try and do that when I go out now is have a glass of water at the ready with each drink um 
because yeah besides the 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 bathroom um or the deal that that can be even for, for myself i'm kind of like it just keeps my head le level um because now i'm getting up there in the years and uh, alcohol is treating me differently so um it's not as easy to bounce back either and so like the next day when i have to get up and actually be human again um that water really comes in handy um, do you ever have any of those mornings where everyone you were out with like really went too far but you didn't you wake up and you're just like so thankful <laughs> to not have a hangover i feel i feel i feel like that's almost like that's my grown-up feeling right when everybody's yeah. like oh i'm really feeling it oh i got kicked in the teeth last night things like that and i'm like i'm going shopping and then i'm gonna cut the grass and then i'm gonna put the chairs away from outside uh so that but that's when i feel like an adult but it's an accomplishment it's good i feel good yeah but it's when you thank the you of last night yeah yeah you thank right? past yeah. Ardra for that or past alex for that this leads right into tip number 11 which is gonna sound like a direct contradiction to everything we just said and that is support my bad decisions and do not judge because re like realistically, we're not going to be perfect all the time. We are going to cut loose from time to time and we don't need to hear any shit about it. Like I feel like so many people with MS are being scrutinized all the time, whether it's by doctors or family and friends over everything they eat, how much they drink, how much they weigh, everything that goes into their mouths, how much they exercise, like just, you know, we are human and we also deserve to enjoy things. And sometimes we're not gonna make the best decisions and just, I don't know, support us in those bad decisions. Yeah, or even if you're not supporting i mean don't judge yeah. and keep your comments to yourself uh you know if you have nothing nice to say don't say it kind of vibe like yeah but you still like see that side eye right you know it's yeah. like look we all have vices uh and even if they're not you know if i've gotten away from it 90 percent, and sometimes i hit that vice again just don't judge me uh people make mistakes and uh i'm just trying to have a good time you know this is what I love about, I can think of the handful of people that I am closest to who I know if I want to have an extra glass of wine that they will say, like, we will get you to the car. We will get you to bed. Like, we will help you. And I mean, that sounds like I'm fall down drunk. But really, when you have MS, sometimes it can feel like you're already one or two drinks ahead. Like, it does affect things that are already a problem like balance you know so it's maybe not always the greatest choice to indulge a little bit but i appreciate the people who support me through those questionable decisions yeah and we're moving to the holiday season i feel like anytime you're trying to have a good time and imbibing you know that's a little tiny holiday totally. so let's just all enjoy our holiday and get off my back yep but be safe right we don't want anyone falling oh, yeah. and breaking yeah. anything like, yeah. So maybe drink at home. We are at the last tip, and this is maybe one of the most important also, and that is to understand your pact with Satan. If you do party too hard or overindulge, you are going to have to pay what I like to call the MS tax. And I think the, the plan to mitigate that is to just know it's coming. So... The same way you put your event, your party or whatever into the calendar, you have to, and your, even your pre-resting, you have to put that downtime into your calendar. And when you know it's coming, it's like, you don't feel bad about it. You don't feel guilty about it. You know, it's like the price that you paid. Rest is productive. Mm. Schedule it. Yeah, it's like uh like a sounds like a savings account for your rest, right? Like I think anybody even partners need that too, right? Like you do need to consider like oh, I'm doing x y and z, you know, it's going to be exerting I'm going to be exerting x amount of energy or whatever. I need to consider time to take that time for myself to catch up fully. So yeah, that's I think a good idea. But a uh, pact with Satan is great. I need to write that down. I mean, yeah, I, he's definitely the one that comes around to collect the MS tax, right? True, but I, I feel like he also is like the patron saint of good times. True. Right? True. 
if I'm being honest, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I can't disagree with that. Are you getting ready? Are you getting excited for the holidays? Yeah. So we're. I'm kind of really busy this holiday season. Uh, the band that I play in uh, just came out with a new album yesterday. Um, it's on all the streaming sites. I'm going to do a shameless plug. The band's called Howlin'. Yeah, well, tell us what I was going to say. Tell us what it is. Yeah, I'll go into it. It's a shameless plug here, people. So the band is called Howlin' Circus, and the album's called Creature, and it's on all the streaming platforms, and you can buy it on vinyl if uh, you're into that sort of thing. And uh, it's really, really great. And I play bass in the band, and we're going on tour around Ontario, and we're doing one show in Montreal, and it's all happening in November, and then we play in Toronto at the Cameron House on December the 9th. And then I think five days after that, we're going to the Dominican Republic for a nice drop and flop. I love it. And circling back, the Cameron House is an accessible venue, right? Mm. Yeah. I would. So there is a ramp. I'm not sure how wide the hallway is for that ramp, but there is a ramp from the front room to the back room. So if you use... Uh, it is easier to ambulate than other venues that I've been to. I'll say that. Okay. And what's the bathroom situation? The, the bathrooms are on the m ground floor. They're okay. not in the basement, which is typical of Toronto venues. Okay. Well, you might see me at Alex's gig on December 9th at Cameron House. In the meantime... Living well with MS includes investing in our relationships and social capital. The holidays are a great time to make memories and spend time with loved ones. But the pressure to make every moment magical can set us up for frustration and feelings of failure. I can't be awesome all the time or even most of the time. And if I don't make it to every invitation, it's okay. Because here's the thing about the holidays, they happen literally every year. We hope this party planning episode got you feeling festive because the Tripping On Air annual gift guide drops November 24th, just two weeks from now, and you are not gonna wanna miss it. Do you have a life hack for partying with MS? Drop it in the comments, we wanna hear from you. Thanks for tuning in, trippers. Thanks for listening to Tripping On Air. Don't forget to visit us at trippingonair.com.